All right, so after hearing his uh, sob story, not really a sob story, to be honest, it's mostly, you know, just him. He even said, like, you know, I'm not going to make you feel sorry for me or whatever, or I don't know if he said that exactly, but pretty much. Like, he's just he's just basically a horrible person that kills a bunch of people only because his moral compass uh, isn't working. You know, it's like you imagine like a compass. Like there's morality on it, good and evil, and his is like just not working. He, he shakes it, it's just, it's just like busted, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, well, what does he have to say for himself after all that? I don't know. And that's everything. Appalling, is it not? Organa. If you hate me for what I did to her, you can take this sword and kill me with it. And you can have my key. I will put up a fight. You have the right to exact punishment on me. Killing you would accomplish nothing. It is neither my place to forgive nor punish you. As much as it would make me feel better, doing so would serve no meaningful purpose. I would like to I would like you to give me a little time though. I need time to cool down enough that I can talk to you with a clear head. Of course. So you are still willing to speak with me? I gave you my word. I told you I would help figure out what path you should take. You're an honorable man. Will not force your hand if you don't want to do this. You can tell me to leave, and I'll walk right out the door. More than anger or hatred, I'm simply deeply pained. Maybe things would have turned out better if I were as sympathetic a man as you. People are supposed to be able to feel happy or sad for each other. I can't though, which must make me a beast. When you first met Morgana, you felt a desire to rescue her from the slave traders, did you not? You thought of someone other than yourself. I never saw that desire through, though. My thirst far overpowered anything I may have wanted to do for her. And the next time we met, I sold her to the Lord. As I said before, there's no room for interpretation in the things I have done. Whatever I might have wanted to do at one point, it's all meaningless now. It's as if I was being controlled by a very bloodthirsty player in like a D&D game or something, you know? Regardless... Anything I do for someone else isn't ultimately for my own benefit. Because it's what I need. No matter how selfish your motivations may ultimately be, please, let me believe some part of you does genuinely want to help her. Alright. I know I will sound like a hypocrite for saying this, but sitting back and waiting for her to die is not what I want. When I cut off her arm, I didn't feel any of the thrill or euphoria that I usually do when I take my sword to someone. I can't say whether that means I had a conscious, but for a moment, or I just wasn't myself at the time. If you can save her though, please do. I can't do anything. If I try, I'll only make things worse. I cannot do everything on my own either. Give me your word that you will atone to Morgana for your actions. While I doubt making reparations will clear me of my crimes, if that is what you want me to do, that is what I will do. Can I ask you something? What is it? Tell me more about my next life. I want to know what kind of man I am. I want to know every mistake I make, all the details. I warn you, it's a tale far more barbaric than anything you can imagine. Do you still want to hear it? Because you kind of just, I mean, you kill people, which is normal. You've already killed people. But also, you eat the corpses? I don't know how you feel about that. I mean, probably you feel the same way. It's like, oh, eat some corpses? Huh? I guess that's, you know, it's practical at least. I'm not wasting meat, you know? <laughs> anyway, I do. And I have little doubt that I will believe it. If you're worried I might react the way I did earlier, I'll lay down my sword, 
Though I probably st I can still choke you out, though. You know, I, these hands are also weapons. <laughs> you can tie me up too if you want. Okay. You should probably do that. That won't be necessary. I don't know. You should probably do that. <laughs> I'm going to trust you. It's a horrible idea. I'll tell you the whole hopelessly tragic truth. Everything I saw with no embellishments. Please do. Okay, well. You already saw it. We already went through the visual novel, you know, of the story of Yukimasa. So we don't have to, probably don't have to go through it again. Just gonna, you know, just uh, summarize it. And so, I told him the tale I witnessed beyond the second door. That he lost his memory in the shipwreck. That he was treated like a beast by the people... By the people in the land where he washed up, that he massacred countless people, and that he took the life of his lover who had come in search of him, never wavering in her belief that he was still alive. I told him about the white-haired girl. I told him about the things he made Giselle do. I didn't hide anything. As I spoke, he would occasionally grimace, or his eyes would go wide for a moment, without once did he interrupt me. He sat there in silence until I finished. It's quite a, quite a story, you know, this is... Just told the entire arc, word for word. You weren't kidding. That was far worse than I imagined. It is the truth, though. You become the target of Mograna's loathing, and you're led back to the mansion. That is what lies in your future. As difficult it may be to comprehend, that person is you. The man who does all of those things hundreds of years ago from now is you. I really am a beast. A horrendously precarious creature. As I interpret it, when you lost your memory, you also lost everything you used to suppress your nature. You lost the foundation you have built, and as a result, you are no longer able to maintain that balance. Will that mean that what I am now is, comparatively speaking, human? You know, it's like, at least I'm not as bad as my future self. No, I'm no different now. I have no more control over myself when I'm killing people than the man you described. You see me do reprehensible things, and in spite of that you were never condescending or insulting, never acted disgusted or afraid of me. Are all angels as compassionate as you? I'm not an angel. I was simply biting my tongue. Are you afraid of me then? I'm not afraid of you, no. What are you then? I don't understand. I'm of the belief that now is not the appropriate time for me to allow my personal feelings to influence my actions. My task is to save Morgana. If I'm to be honest with you for a moment, I despise the man you are in the future. But I'm also equally frustrated myself. You're right. The things you did were inexcusable. You murdered innocents. You killed the woman who came searching for you. But on a personal level, what angers me the most is that you put blood on the hands of the woman I love. I know very well that to you, it's something you haven't done yet. But it was still your soul. It tears me apart inside that I couldn't return in time to stop it. You'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who wouldn't be angry to know someone they care about had received that kind of treatment. I suppose. That's how you feel, though. Aren't you interested in taking revenge on me? As I mentioned before, there are times when allowing your emotions to take the reins is the wrong course of action. This is one of those times. Seeking vengeance is the wrong thing for me to do the, right now. If I can eliminate Omargana's hatred, the three of your souls will be set free as well. So you're going to save me too? Yes, I am. I don't consider myself worthy of redemption, especially not after hearing about the things I will do. I'm a beast, through and through. A twisted psychopathic monster. I mean, that's what I'm saying this entire time. You know, I've never used the word psychopath, but at least, oh, they never used the word psychopath. I've been using it because that's exactly, this, that's exactly what describes them. You were conflicted, though. You struggled against the creature that dwelled inside you. It's true that you found prevented joy in violence and murder. But you also felt kindness, which calls a part of you to seek peace. And the same can be said of you in this time as well. If you actually were nothing but a beast, or rather nothing but a man that derived pleasure in killing, maybe then I could have truly reviled you. 
then you will be irredeemable, no matter what had turned you into that, no matter how much pain and suffering had driven you to that point. But your instability, your constantly shifting desires, your mental frailty, all appear to me as very human traits. Tell me, how should I live my life from here on? What is it you want most? I... The easiest road for me would be the one I walk now, to continue being a killer. No fighting my desires, no resisting what's inside me. Would that be my salvation? To abandon my humanity entirely? I don't know what I should do, what I'm supposed to do. I'm a complete loss about everything. I would like to believe that your desire to live in peace is sincere, and that's what I want for you too. It will be more it will be the more trying path, yes, because you will have to fight against your nature to stay on it. But we live in the human world, and you also have Pauline, who wants the same thing, extending your hand or extending her hand for you, inviting you to join her. So I encourage you to suppress your urges. Your life will not be easy for it, but I implore you to take the rocky road. For your own sake and for hers, you need to go cold turkey, basically. You gotta fight your addiction to kill. You know, I, I mean, there could be a there could be an analogy you could make here with like drugs, I guess, or something. But instead of drugs, it's, it's murder. I don't know. Even if it means my entire life is built on a foundation of lies. Before today, I believe it was true not to be, or before today, I believe it was wrong not to be true to oneself. But as I listened to tell your story, I came to realize that maybe there are exceptions. Some things. You can, and possibly should, keep locked inside you, where they can't hurt anyone else. However, I also think you have a tendency to try and act too perfect around her, both in this life and the next. You cover up so much of yourself, you become an entirely different person. You can be your conflicted and perfect self around her. The man you are right now, lost in trying to find his way. I have little doubt she will accept that man. What you need most is restraint. I see. Like, be true to yourself. Like, it's like, when, the, 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 what they always say that? No. Be yourself. But if yourself is a murderous psychopath, don't be yourself. You know? Anyway. So tell me, do you think my future can be changed? I don't know for certain. So all I can do is speculate. But as you share the same soul, I expect any changes you make now will be reflected in your future incarnation. Is that? I don't know. We just, we just assume that that'll, that'll be like that. We don't know how this time travel thing works. It could just be all fake. You know, I'm thinking it's all an illusion. Actually, you know, we're not really time traveling. I don't know. But then, what happened? What about the stories in the future? I mean, the, the stories in the future could also be just an illusion as well because we're all in, just always in the mansion, right? I don't know. But then we do interact with you. Because I'm thinking that's my theory, right? And the first three stories we went through about the incarnations of these three sinners, that is all just an illusion. But then we do kind of interact with people outside of the mansion. We don't see their character sprites, but I don't know. Anyway. I have my work cut out for me then. Pauline. She believed in me. She put her faith in the beasts and went out in search of him. I cannot allow myself to be the kind of monster that would murder a woman like her. I have to change. I will change the future. I will change the future. <laughs> That's usually what a protagonist says in JRPG. I will change the future. I'll save the world. Except, you know, it's this guy. You can do it. When my life here comes to an end, I vow to make my next one better. Thank you for listening to me, for giving me guidance. It's a good therapy session, <laughs> you know, like curing my psychopathy or psycho. How you call it? Psychopathy, psychopathy. Uh, I can't say I'm particularly suited for the job. Knowing that my words are going to influence the direction of another's life is an unimaginable amount of pressure. I don't know. I'd say you pull off well enough. If you ever decide to quit being an angel, you make a damn convincing missionary. I have no interest in being a missionary, and as I've told you, I'm not an angel. 
that's too bad. I joined the Church of Michelle. Is that a joke? Are you trying? Is are you? You have a sense of humor now? Hmm? Don't look at me like that. I'm just kidding. Now can I get angry at you? As I've been telling you, I'm an ordinary man. I'm not special in any way like you seem to think I am. You're not ordinary. You're different, but not in the same way I am. I'm... I wouldn't ask any normal man to show me how to lead my life. I see. Although, what passes for normal differs from person to person, I suppose. Just as I don't think you're normal, I'm sure there are people out there who do. Perhaps. But maybe if they're just able to see my desire to be normal. Well, that's everything I have to tell you. You're going to want to talk to the Lord next, I assume. That's right. I'm going to convince him to hand over his key, and then I'm going to set Morgana free. I doubt you have much luck convincing him of anything, but I'll help in any way I can. I appreciate it. I'll get him to come to supper tonight. You'll be there too. Okay, I'll be there. If I could ask you one favor though, could you try to arrange that for as late as possible? That should be doable, but why? There's someone else I need to speak with first. Alright. I'll do what I can. Thank you. See you this evening then. Well, it's better when, you know, as long as he's not pointing the sword at me. It's fine to have him as an ally. I mean, he doesn't, I don't know, I'm trying to think. I mean, he is pretty loyal, technically, for the most part. But then again, he is betraying the Lord, technically, you know, but, you know. I don't think he's a very... Well... And then again, I think of his future self. His future self actually... No, 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 never mind. I was thinking, like, at least he's honorable, despite his psychopathic tendencies, but no. When you think about it, he does go back on his word sometimes, especially that one time on the ship, you know, his future self. He just framed the guy, I guess, just to get off his kicks or whatever, <laughs> just to torture people. Uh, did I lead him to lead him to the correct path? Will he actually find redemption at the end of it? No. I made the right decision. Even if he doesn't in this life, there's enough of a chance that he will do in his next. One left and that's it. I'm almost there, Giselle. Yep. Two down, one to go. I've almost made it to Morgana. I've come this far. All that's left is to speak of the Lord. Stay focused, Michelle. The pieces I have still don't fit together yet. As Morgana told it, the Lord was a cruel man from the moment she first saw him. And he wasn't much different in the swordsman's telling of the events either. Are those portrayals a full picture of what kind of man he is? Will adding his perspective do anything but amplify Morgana's hatred? And if he really is exactly the man he's been made out to be, how do you explain his eternal struggles from the third door? Did his core personality change of the times? Everyone else I've met has been fundamentally the same, though. Are you the exception? Jacopo? I, I, I feel like I'm still saying that wrong. Jacopo? Jacopo? No. Morgana found joy in her life during her three years of the brothel. She wept about not being given the opportunity to thank them. So maybe Mario is more likely to be able to assuage Morgana's animosity. I'll have to come to hear what she has to say. Yeah, we still have a meeting with her, by the way. Ugh. I can barely move my right arm. <laughs> it's still broken? Ugh. I can't feel my fingers at all. It burns. I've managed this long, but damn if it doesn't hurt. Nope, no painkillers, you know, in back back then. Ugh. Advil hasn't been invented yet. As it turns out. Why must you handle miracles for nothing? Okay, I don't know who's speaking, but... Different scene. I know that voice. I'm looking up at someone. A woman. She's draped in a black fog, and I can't make out many details. But even through the darkness, I know immediately who she is. She is mother. My... No. She's not my mother. She is... 
Why would you even ask such a question, mother? We're barely holding on as it is, my dear. It's not wrong to expect a little remuneration for our services. No, mother. It is wrong. Miracles are not to be bartered for. God the Father does not charge for his miracles. So why should we when I am only borrowing his power? Listen to me, Morgana. Every time you give someone a blessing, you're hurting yourself. If not for the miracle itself, he still deserves some degree of compensation for the pain. I know you're concerned for me, mother, and I appreciate it very much. But I'm happy with the things way uh, the way things are. I'm happy to be able to help others with thy heavenly father's power. A power you won't have much longer, my dear, if we can't afford to keep ourselves fed. I'm a saint, aren't I? Yes, you're my sweet little saint. God will not forsake his saint. No matter how difficult it may get, he will always provide me a way to continue doing his work. And you're the mother of that saint, aren't you? Yes, that's right. I conceived you untainted by the hands of a man. That you must respect his will as well, mother. It must be our highest priority. You're right. I was wrong, my dear saint. Hmm. I'm going to sell her now. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is one of the stories. She just sells her to the slave trader. <laughs> or, not slave, well, sort of. She sells it to the lord anyway. Pretty much a slave. Mother. Mother, you agree with me. You said I was right. So why are you taking money from that man? Mother. Mother looks over as a strange man shoved me into a carriage. The look in her eyes sends a chill down my spine. I see her lips moving. She doesn't actually say the words out loud, but I can make out every individual syllable. Because you're worthless to me. You're not making me money. Which is true, actually, back then. I mean, at least for peasants, anyway. Kids are there to make money, you know? That's literally it. That's literally to, like, uh, take care of the farm. You would That's the reason why you have, like, a lot of kids is to, it's for the labor, you know, for the most part. Unle well, unlike today, right? At least in most parts of the world. You would hope so, anyway. Welcome, Donald of God. You'll be performing miracles for me now. And if you cooperate, I can guarantee you'll live more than comfortably. It's not true. That's not true. You chain her, actually. You chain her and, you know, drain her blood and face falls off. Anyway. Miracles are not something you perform for one single person's benefit. What? Miracles are not magic or parlor tricks. They are precious gift, granted to me by my father in heaven. Using his power for personal gratification is a grave sin. I will do no such thing. I entreat you to think long and hard about your actions. Do away with such selfish desires and dedicate yourself to helping the people. The power you have been given was bestowed upon you by the hand of God. It is not your power. It's not by my hand that was once again given flesh. No, I'm just, just suddenly reminded of Castlevania. Um, he has merely allowed you to make use of it for a short time. Pride is a sin. Please consider how you conduct yourself. You're an ignorant, insolent child, aren't you? I bought you. You're my property. You have no right to an opinion. That's not my opinion. That's the way of the world. As God, silence. You're not here to talk. You're here to perform miracles for me and my guests. As I've already told you, I will do no such thing. What you will or will not do is my decision, not yours. The Lord says with a sickening laugh. That grabs me by the hair and knocks me to the floor. Quote, unquote. I beg him to stop, but he isn't listening to a word I say. Again, I said before, like, how we learn about Morgana's story from, like, a weird, like, third-person narration. I mean, this is basically her story again, but in first person. I wish we just did this first time. I wish we skipped that part, you know, just went here. I feel like, or at least, you know, you know, move it around a little bit. Like, we learn about the story first, firsthand, and then go back to the past or whatever, maybe. But, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why we need to tell the story twice, I feel like. Because it would be it would be just better just to, you know, see it first person, right? That's the idea anyway, I think. Uh, cheers. This takes blood and good fortune to all. I stare vaguely at the crowd, gathered for the Lord's blood feast. Every time he has guests, he throws another party, and every time he slices another part of my arm or legs open. It isn't long before they're an unsightly web of crisscrossing scars. 
The Lord sometimes has trouble deciding where to cut. But that out of any sense of sympathy for me. He simply thinks drawing blood from an untouched area of my body will make it more effective. The Lord strips me bare. Perhaps I'll use your stomach today, saint. Is you able to get some nice pure blood from there? Stop this. Can't you comprehend what you're doing is an affront to the Lord? I'm free to do what I wish in my property. Saint or not, you're no different than any of my slaves. The Lord is greatly displeased with your actions. Then use your miracle powers to deliver divine punishment on me. I mean, that happens eventually. <laughs> Go on. You can do that, can't you? Your soul will be punished. You may not see the effects now, but you will pay for your sins one day. Heh. <laughs> You're not as threatening as you think you are. You think you are. Uh, you are not as threatening as you think you are. Buck naked? That, that's kind of a weird sentence for me. I don't know. You're not as threatening as you think you are. Buck naked, girl. Okay, so it's like, it's like oh, I don't know. Kind of like you're not as threatening as you think you are. Buck naked, girl. It's kind of weird. Anyway, also she's naked. She's, she's very young at this point. Uh, anyway, uh, don't give me that look, girl. I have no interest in taking that from you. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> this is, I, I'm just gonna slowly kill you, that's all. You'd be lucky to find anyone willing to... Will, anyone willing to lay with a girl covered in the disgusting scars. All I can do is wait and endure day after day of torture and shame. A lord is searching for new places to stick his knife. My entire body except for, for my face is covered in reddish black wounds. Someone. Anyone, help me. Get me out of here. Please, someone. Oh, Father, who are out in heaven, I pray for you to lend me on to deliverance. Father, your trials. They are much too great. And Jacob, I get, I, I'm reminded of Jacob's story. I kind of hate him. And you know? This doesn't, <laughs> this isn't any better, really. Is like past incarnation. Even though, like, again, in the third story, he was kind of the victim, too, of Maria's, like, machinations, but he's still an asshole. So, <laughs> either way. Organa. That was much clearer than the first time I saw it. Everything she felt. Her struggling. Her sincerity. Her pain. And her voice. It felt almost as though I was the one going through it all. Uh, the Lord. I can understand why Morgana would bear such a powerful grudge against him, considering everything he did to her. Why would he do that, though? Is there some reason, some explanation for his actions? Uh, I'm thoroughly exhausted, like I've spent just the last several months having my blood drain again and again. My limbs feel like they have boulders tied to them. Just trying to get to my feet makes me dizzy. Ugh. So cold. She's probably waiting for me by now. I should get going. I have to do this. Move, damn it. Fighting against my body's attempts to succumb to gravity with every step through sheer force of will, I make my way to the courtyard. Oh, we, we can't, you know, we can't postpone this appointment, unfortunately. Oh, there you are. Thank God you came. Sneaking onto church grounds has been unnerving, so have you? Oh, are you alright? You look like you just came back from the dead. I mean, <laughs> yes, that's true. A lot, a lot of funny sa statements in this game. I'm fine. Thank you for coming. Now to continue our conversation from yesterday. Whoa, 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 slow down. Who do you think you're convincing? You look about as fine as a fucking corpse. If you're not feeling well, we can always do this some other time. Whoa, what happened to your hand? It's a minor injury. Nothing of any significance. Seriously, what do you think you're convincing, man? <laughs> I can get around just fine without a few fingers. You gotta take yourself into consideration, too. You can only run and raw determination for so long. And imagine how, make how it makes me feel for a second. You asking to talk and showing up looking like that. If you want to get anything done, you gotta take care of yourself first. Hey, I'm back to your room and rest. Let's do this some other day, okay? When you're feeling... I don't have that kind of time. Noon tomorrow. That's my deadline. I have to take care of everything before then. I know damn well what condition I'm in. 
But that doesn't change what I need to do. If I don't, I can't save Morgana. Can't get yourself back. That makes it all the more important you get your rest. And when do you suggest I do that exactly? Honestly, I don't get why you're in such a damn tizzy. Get a hold of yourself, man. I am bloody calm. It sure don't look it. You're already pushing yourself to the edge. I don't want to be responsible for giving you that last nudge. So quit bickering with me, get your ass back, get some rest. You don't understand the gravity of the situation. None of you do. You don't grasp how great an effect stopping what happens tomorrow will have. I have to keep moving, even if it means crawling through the dirt. If I don't, not only will I fail to make things better, Organa's almost certainly got even worse fates to serve for all of you, so long as her curse lives on. I'm the only one here who knows what awaits. So that what makes you what, a prophet or something then? Not exactly, no. But in terms of this time period, that would be the most apt description. Do you not believe me? Well, you know, that is asking a lot. Like, I'm already a bit of a, you know, I'm a bit of an atheist already, so that's fine. You don't have to. At the very least, I want you to believe that I genuinely believe something terrible is going to happen tomorrow if I don't do something. That I think I don't have time to waste. All I need you to do is tell me what you know. Did you do that for me? Assuming you actually are a prophet or whatever, why don't you just, you know, just get out of hell of town? Say fuck it, this is too much, and vanish into the night. No one's gonna blame me if you do. Hell, is anyone even gonna notice you did anything if you do succeed? I'm not in this for the attention or praise. I cannot sit idly by knowing what I know. See what has happened and what will. Knowing what Morgana went through, what she felt. I can't abandon her, not anymore. I can't let my knowledge go to waste. While it is true that the mansion will continue to be wrapped in darkness so long as Morgana's curse remains in effect. And nothing can be put to rest until I do something about that. That's not my sole motivation anymore. I sincerely want to help Morgana. Giselle, is this what you meant when you told me you wanted me to save her? Well, you seem like the kind of fellow who's always fretting about something or other. You don't know how to take it easy, do you? Though I guess in a way that's kind of why you could fight so hard, huh? Alright, you win. Now talk. Anything you want to know, I'll tell you. Thank you very much. But, you sit your, sit your butt down first. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. You should like probably sit down. It's kind of fate. Uh, uh okay. Hee hee ha ha. Hoo hoo ha ha. Hee hee ha ha. Hoo hoo ha ha. Um... Morgana said that. She did. She described her three or described her three there uh, three years there as one of the brightest periods of her life. Huh. Who'd have thought? Damn, that's kinda really great to hear. Did she never tell you herself how she felt? She never really made much of an attempt to be part of the group. It was like she had well, she had these colossal walls all around her. I can see that. Yeah, so I always kind of felt like I never knew if I was sticking my nose in too far or not, you know? She appreciated you what you and the other woman did for her. After the raid four years ago, she ended up in the hands of a slave trader. As she was being transported, she said this, with tears in her eyes. I'm sad because I didn't get the chance to show my gratitude to people very dear to me. Oh, damn. So is that, you know, absolutely 100% exactly what she said? You're not just pulling it out of your ass, are you? Those are, were her exact words, yes. As hard as it may be to believe. Nah, I believe you. I'm just surprised is all. I mean, just wow. Yeah. If I had known that was how she felt, maybe I could be a little friendly with her. You weren't friendly with her? Not especially. I mean, that's not to say I was cold or anything. It's just that all the girls kept a, distance, a bit of a distance from her. Not because we didn't like her, but because that's what it looked like she wanted. Some distance. None of us were really cut off with a caretaker gig. As much as we love to be some kind of mother figure to her, we just didn't have it in us. Who was closest to her? Oh, well, he's dead. 
Oh yeah, she did have like a, not really a boyfriend necessarily, but someone taking care of her, right? So you, it was the guy that uh, uh, took her, you know, or like when she escaped from the Lord's Manor or whatever, he's the guy that brought her to the brothel in the first place and everything and took care of her. But yeah, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> he, didn't even, he didn't have a character sprite, you know? He was not even a important character. The slave. Huh? What's this about a slave? There was a young man, a slave who participated in the revolt of the Lord's Manor, who saved Morgana's life. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the guy. He was the closest of any of us to her, at least. He gave her the most attention. And he's... Oh, six feet under. That's unfortunate. What can you do? People come and go. That's just the way of things. I thought that maybe if you were still alive, that would improve our chances of saving Morgana. I improve our chances. But there's only one way about it. So you smash the Lord's fucking skull and take his key. That's not an option. Doing that would not alle alleviate her hatred. Would you be a willing to accompany us when we go into the observation tower? Huh? Me? Why? I want you to be there to say something to her. I'll say whatever you want me to say once you've got her out of the tower. Don't you think being able to hear the voice of someone she cares for when she's finally set free would do more to pull her out of the darkness than anything else? That's all the more reason it can't be me. Why not? Like I've been saying, I was never that tight of her. I've kept my distance. I can't do anything, not with the reasons you've given me for why she's so full of hatred. I have no other options, though. You know, actually, while I doubt this will do much in the way of getting rid of her grudge, there is something I was supposed to give her, but never got the chance. Oh? It's nothing special. Just a rinky dick little necklace, but if you get the chance, would you mind giving it to her? If anyone, that should come from you. It's not from me. It was... well, it was supposed to be from the slave. He got it for her as a birthday present, but that was the day the brothel got raided. So yeah, that's the story. Make sure she gets it, would you? Okay, I will. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> thanks, dude. <laughs> I don't know how she's supposed to be... I don't know, she has some kind of... Did she, I felt like she used to have a bit of like a... You know, southern accent in the the other story, like her future self, but I don't know what kind of accent she has now. I'm not sure. She's like, thanks, man. Thanks, dude. I mean, I mentioned Japanese in the original translation. She's probably very, she talks very casually, you know, talks very like, a very much, uh, um, very like, uh, rough, you know, roughly, if that makes any sense. Because in Japanese, there's like very levels of politeness you would speak in, and especially in like a fictional story, some characters will speak in a very particular way. They, showcase their personality you know so i probably imagine maria speaks in a very rough way you know the op like very impolite way but it's kind of her personality right well now that's out of the way i should split best of there you are um i don't know who's saying this oh, it's just okay i thought it was jacob I was like there you are i'm gonna murder you now Hiya! Boo, 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 boo. and we all die no um there you are you were in your room. I was already sick. What are you two doing here? You're going to talk to the Lord tonight, right? So, there's a chance you might be able to set the saintess free. No way I'm going to miss that. That's why you're here. That and to say goodbye. I want for them to make reparations for as, as soon as the girl's released. Do you feel the same way, Nelly? If a male tells me he wants to, then I won't stop him. But he was threatened, so it's possible. I don't think there's a need for him to rush to be punished. I don't want to lose my brother. Surely there are other ways he can atone. And that's reasonable. I do feel guilty about what he was put through. It's not your fault, what he did. Anyway, I'm really, really anxious about tonight, but I'm sure it'll turn out fine. You'll make it work, won't you, George Michelle? I'll do my best. Oh, come on, you gotta act confident. Take care of my mail for me, too. He's very fragile, so handle him with care. Like a big old box of china. <laughs> like when you're, like, moving. There's, like, a little symbol on it. Is he really... 
Is it really that fragile? As for me, um, if he looks like he's gonna do anything he shouldn't, would you stop him for me? <laughs> Just like stop him from going on a killing spree, by the way. It's very easy with your broken arm. Or, it was a, well, it's not really his arm is broken, it's just like, it's wounded, but mostly his fingers are broken, you know? I don't know if it's like, I don't know if both hands are broken, I think it was only one hand that's broken, I don't know. He's not gonna be able to do much if he has broken fingers on both hands though, can't hold anything. Well, I guess you could, but, like, uh, it's a crab hand, you gotta do like a, cra a pincer thing, I don't know. Uh, it was, uh, I wish I could be there to do it myself, but, well... He insists only the people directly involved should be there, and I want to respect that. Yeah, if, if everyone was in the same spot, I guess, the, you know, I imagine the Lord, Lord Barnier, would just activate, like, a, a pitfall trap, and then everyone just falls into spikes. Like, aha, I got you. <laughs> you know, all the witnesses are dead. Anyway. I was never going to allow anyone to get hurt anyway. That's good. Thank you. He and the Lord may have caused the girl a great great deal of pain, but I still don't want anyone to get hurt. Some people deserve it, and I say let them have it. Now, Mario, don't be like that. You're the weird one, though, Miss Perfect. Go around letting everyone off the hook for everything, and the whole damn world's gonna fall, come falling down around you. He... He did what he did for me, though. And the Lord. He's only in it for his own profit. Much as he, as he says it benefits the city. So it comes back around to his own pockets. Lord's not a bad man, though. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it a thousand times. No one's a bad person in your eyes, I know. Uh, now, now, can we please try to keep things civil? Yeah, sorry, bad habit, I know. I talk a lot of rot, but I don't really mean half of it. I do think he's much better than the old Lord, though. Hold on a second. Shotomate. What did you say? He's better than the old... When did the current lord take his place? Uh, four years ago. Nani? <laughs> you know, because that means... Well, okay, so he's not the... Okay, so he is, like, he's Lord Barnier, but, like, he's a different Lord Barnier. He's the... the he inherited the, the title. So he's not the same lord that caused, uh... Uh, Morgana's suffering in the first place, you know, cutting her up and everything. Though, he still kind of did it anyway. You know, he said he continued the practice, however, in the tower. So, okay, so it is a different person, but then I guess Morgana thought it was the same person because she just assumed it was the Lord and everything. Uh, anyway. Morgana was nine years old when she was the Lord's Manor. Seven years ago. Maria, were you ever at the Lord's Manor any time seven years ago? No, I was never hired by anyone there. Or, who said that? Or was it Mar Mario? Nah, that's what that was, I was wondering. Like, I thought it was Pauline saying that. Because Pauline's like, you know, her ridge, or the name she told us before is Marie, so I got mixed up. Um, I was wondering why she would say nah. <laughs> she wouldn't say nah. No, it's Mario who said that. Nah, I was never hired by anyone there. You know, she was like that. Anyway, then when she didn't have any interaction with Laura seven years ago, Ah, uh, now it all makes sense. How did I not consider this possibility sooner? I know what kind of man he is. I know the people he had around him. Maria, is the slave actually dead? Nani? Dun dun dun. Hmm. So wait, that's kind of a leap, but I'm I'm assuming he means the slave that helped. Morgana became the Lord somehow? But then why is he using her blood then? You know, I mean, or maybe he had that in mind in the first place. And maybe I'm thinking who, like, they said it again and again, like, who, why would Bannis try to raid like a Rotho? I'm thinking maybe that person had something to do with it, maybe? Hmm. Maybe the slave guy is actually pretty important. Maybe he's Jacob already. I don't know. Anyway, um,. You better have a damn good reason for this. I don't know who's saying that. Oh, no, okay, it's just, just uh, meeting up with the Lord and everything. I came because you say you have something important to discuss. I care to tell me who the hell this white-haired man is and what he's doing here? You neglected to mention we'd have in company. I'm the one who asked him to arrange the meeting with you. 
It's funny how Yukimasa still has the same sprite, so he's still like, it looks like he's still intimidating us, but it's like, he's on our side technically, but, eh. Well, assumedly anyway. And who the hell would you be? His, his, there's pretty fancy as cheese and like, you know, I imagine like a nice bun. Much better. Makes me hungry. Anyway, um. He's an angel. <laughs> He's an angel. Or a prophet. What? Did you both finally snap under the pressure? I'll leave it to you for you to decide what you, what, what you think I am. I will say though that I know everything. I know you've got to go in prison in the observation tower. And I know you're taking her blood and calling it medicine, passing it out to the church. Or at the church. Which one of you squealed? No one told him anything, he just knew. He knows everything, including my deepest desires. What happens in my next life? <laughs> it's just Yuki Masa, without any context, just sounds like a crazy person. I mean, he already is, I guess. But even crazier. He's probably peering into your soul this very moment. You've completely lost it, I see. Well, how you got your information doesn't matter. All I need to know is this. What are you hoping to gain from it? Wealth? My downfall? What? Morgana's freedom. I want you to give me your key. And then I want you to tell me your story. I've come here from the future. From the world after Morgana's death. Her soul courses with hatred for the three of you. As she's placed a curse of eternal suffering on your souls. Has everyone on this damn table gone mad? Did you seriously think I would believe that nonsense? Don't interrupt me. Shut up. No. <laughs> You're just like, no, shut up. My objective is not so much to rescue Morgana's physical body from the tower. To save her soul from the eternity of loathing. I can achieve that on my own, however. Because I am not from this time. I have had no direct interaction of her or anyone here until just recently. In order to make her have a change of heart... I need to gather the truth from the people who are from this time. And I suspect that you hold the last piece of the puzzle. The biggest piece. That you have a far deeper connection to Morgana than anyone else here. No, I'm all but certain of it now. Your perspective is crucial to accomplishing my goal. Tell me your whole story, please. How you ended up capturing and imprisoning Morgana, what you thought and felt along the way. Your truth will get through to her. I know it. That will be the turning point in all of this. Her curse will be no more, and you will all be returned to the past you are meant to walk. Everyone will have their salvation. Someone throw this madman out. I won't... I won't do it. <laughs> you know, I'm the only guy with a sword here, so nope. Neither will I. I mean, I wasn't going to do it anyway, because I'm a bit of a weakling. Though I can, st I can stab people with necks, though. You know, Mel's really good at stabbing people in the neck. Damn worthless curse. So this time, at least, you know, I mean, it's funny because we had a very similar scene where we confronted the Lord and uh, the two other guys and, you know, they killed us. But this time, we have them on our side. I'll call the guards then. Who do you think I am exactly? I'm the Lord of this land. Under ordinary circumstances, I've never so much as deigned to speak with you, lowly peasant. Now get out of my sight. Or I'll take it as an act of aggression and you'll find yourself without a head. In this room right now, you're not a lord. You're a lone man. Until you hand over your key, we're not letting you leave. And you'll find there aren't any guards for you to call. You're all alone on this estate. Your preoccupation to stay out of sight, play right into our hands. Accept your defeat, lord. We've already agreed to set the witch free. Cowardly worms. Ironic, coming from you. Hmm. I didn't think you turned Coke co quite so eagerly. The nun and your kid sister are in on it too, I take it. We were only working for you. We never felt any sort of allegiance to you. Loyalty found out what one has to gain or lose is more, far more resilient than uncertain, fluctuating feelings. But it would appear this white-haired man shattered that foundation. <laughs> How long have you been colluding with them, Kerr? I arrived in this era two days ago. What? Two days? You must have like, you know, a hundred levels in charisma or something, you know? You, you, you pass some speech checks. In just two days, you got these worms dancing for you. They're not dancing for me. 
I merely smoke with them and they listen. You're a disturbed man. You couldn't possibly have won these two over in a mere two days. He's no ordinary man. As he said, he knew everything. While I was talking to him, it felt like he was looking directly into my soul. He's definitely unusual one, yeah. It felt like he's known me my whole life, even though he just showed up nowhere two days ago. I didn't believe what he was saying at first, but he knew things he couldn't possibly know. My secret wish, something I've never told anyone before. Well, you gotta be careful, guys. If, if somebody goes up to you and you feel like they are peering deeply into your soul, and that they, they you know, it seems like they, they've known you for so long, even though they're a complete stranger, Either they've come from the future, or most likely, they're a con man, you know? <laughs> they're probably trying to create some kind of cult. And they're using like cold reading to make it seem like they know stuff, but they don't. Like very ambiguous wording, <laughs> you know? Anyway. I don't know what kind of tricks you're playing, but now I know why I've never seen you around. If you've been looking around the city for longer or sticking your nose where it didn't belong, I would have taken notice sooner or later. I'm impressed. In only two days, you managed to convince them both to betray me and set me up. I am indeed the one in charge of this operation. So if it's the Witcher after, I'm the obvious target, yes. And the two dogs there surely have some pent up rage. So I take it you're gonna tie me up and torture me until I tell you what I want to tell. So I. Then torture me until I tell you what you want to know. I'm still smug about it though. That's not a bad idea. What do you say? Starts cracking some fingers. Give me the word. And he's in the ropes. Uh, wait, 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 wait. We agree we're getting rough. Uh, but I like torture, but uh, I don't know. I have no interest in solving this problem with violence. It'll be too easy. Also, like, you know, in a visual novel, solving things with violence is not as cool because there's no animation or anything, it's just text, so I don't know. We're here to uncover the truth. Cause usually, in like an action game, maybe you know, like a, like a real game where you like fight a bot, like a boss fight. You know, maybe you would solve things with violence because it's fun to do. But it was just, it was just being described to you with a fight scene. I don't know, it's not as good. Anyway, we need, we need to exchange blows, only words. Anyway, if we're going to beat it out of him, we would have done so as he walked through the door. We discussed this beforehand. We're only talking. No one's getting into fights. Physically or verbally. That's right. Well, it looks like I've got no way out, so you've got me. I surrender. Take my key. Go open the tower doors. What? That was easier than I expected. Your key's not important right now. Your perspective is what I seek. Why did you make it so the lock required three keys? One person is more than adequate for the job. So why split it in three ways? Is that any of your concern, Kerr? Or is it because it was too much weight to bear it alone? You didn't actually want to imprison Morgana, did you? Something somewhere went wrong, and you backed yourself into a corner and couldn't escape. I'm done listening to you. Am I right or am I wrong, Lord? Or should I say... Jacopo. Jacopo? But isn't his name, um, Jean Francois Bonnier or something like that? I don't know, I can't pronounce it. That's Lord Bonnier to you, you insolent child. You seem to be a bit confused. I'm a son of the house of Bonnier, which means I'm royalty. No, you are not. I don't know how you came to start calling yourself Bonnier but there's not a drop of royal blood flowing through your veins. The slave revolted Lord's Manor seven years ago. You were there, weren't you? During the revolt, you helped Morgana escape. That's right. You saved her life once. That was you. You were the slave from seven years ago. Da-da! Take that! You know, like a Phoenix Wright game. Slave. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Me, a slave? Like hell, a former slave can become royalty. You did it, though. You went from slave to lord. Enough. I don't know who's filling that white-haired head of yours with this drivel, but I'm done listening to it. Say another word, or I'll throttle you myself. 
Keep slandering my name, I dare you! Mario told me the slave from back then was dead. She didn't mean it literally though. Literally though. She meant he wasn't who he used to be anymore. Maria, you've been talking to her too? Because she was afraid if Morgana found out. It only served to throw her deeper into despair. I will, it only served to throw her deeper into despair. The man who had once saved her was now responsible for keeping her imprisoned. The years not work, Kerr. I've said I had enough. I need your perspective. There's more to the story, I'm certain of it. I refuse to believe you acted only for your own benefit, only to cause her pain. If you want the key so damn badly, then take it. Set the witch free, I don't give a damn. But if you say another word, I'll rip your fucking tongue out. Again, the key is not what I need right now. I need your story. Are you deaf or just an imbecile? Your perspective is crucial to saving Morgana's soul. Enough! When you were a slave, you helped Morgana escape from the Lord. Silence! And you spent the next three years with her. Just one more fucking word, I swear to God! So how did you end up here? How did the boy from seven years ago go from saving her to locking her up and stealing her blood? There's no excuse in your actions, no. But please, I need you to tell me how you got to this point. You know? Uh, like, you're doing the same thing you did in last time, technically. Well, last time in the future self, where you lock up the, the, the white-haired girl, right, and everything. Last time it was because Maria kind of tricked him into doing it. I don't know if that's the same in this situation, but... Anyway. Enough! Michelle! The next thing I see is a dagger in his hand pointed at me. I reflexively try to push myself out the path of his charge with my dominant hand, which sends a jolt of excruciating pain up my right arm. Ugh. I'll rip your fucking head off! The Lord swings his arm up, and the necklace spills from my pocket, making a metallic clink as it hits the floor. When he sees it, his eyes go wide for a brief moment. Of course, I'm just as slack-jawed as him. Oh yeah, it's a birthday present, you know, that he never gave, apparently. What? What the hell is going on? Why? How? Why am I looking at a familiar cloud of inky black darkness? There's no one to answer my question though. And no time to think about it either. I have to make a decision right now. The Lord, Dagger Rays, is quickly approaching. What do you mean? I don't know. Sometimes the game says, I have to make a decision. I don't know if it's like literally making a decision or like... It's like in the story, you know, Michelle is gonna make the decision for me. I'm gonna save just in case though. Off to the side, the cloud of darkness is expanding. I 